So subtraction problems, as it turns out, we could write all subtraction problems as addition problems. Uh, but let's look at this first. They want us to rewrite these or uh, to simplify them, or if it is simplified, then it's, well, we'll just write the word simplified. So this first problem right here, negative 5 minus 7, um, that looks, we, we can't really change the sign to make that simplified any further. So we'll just say that this one's simplified. Now, let's look at 4 first here. That's not going to work out very well. Let's do this. So again, this one, um, negative 2 minus 9, we can't really replace any extra signs with a single sign. And again, it does say that up here. But again, we're not... That's, that's what we're looking at right here. So, negative 2 minus 9. It's just going slow. This one, we can't replace any of the signs, so this one also is simplified. Well, what about 2? This one... We have that uh, minus that negative 2 right there, which means we can simplify that one. So we can't write simplified on this one. We need to write what it would look like to make it simplified. We're not solving it. Am I, am I, am I in the way there? Sorry. I am. Uh, so remember that negatives are opposites, or they mean opposites. So this negative 2 right there, means that we're going to take the opposite of that operation. Now it gets rid of the negative. So in other words, that makes that a plus. So I got negative 7 plus 2 now. All right, let's combine these. So number 7. Let, let's move away from the money thing just for this one problem. Then we can come back to it, okay? Maybe it's because it's late and I'm hungry. But um, let's say that you had 18... I don't know, cookies, right? Now, minus means that we're getting rid of them, right? So if I ate six cookies right, right here, and I had 18 to start with, then how many do I have after that? I got 12 cookies left over, and so the answer is just 12. All right, so going back to that kind of the checkbook stuff, or maybe credit card would be more appropriate for this, but let's say that you had 23 bucks, and then since we're minusing, it's like you spent you spent $67, right? Well, how much money do you have after you spent the 67 bucks? Negative 44. Negative 44. Now, the interesting thing is, how did you get that? It just added 23 to negative 67. Okay. All right. That's one way to look at it. Now, these are kind of big numbers, so they may be a little bit different than the ones that we were just doing. And, yeah, we can make that plus negative 67. Um, hmm. So it's kind of like saying that uh, you got negative 67 and 23, right? So if we take 67 and subtract it 23, we just need to acknowledge that up here, we have more negatives than positives, so the answer will still remain negative. 7 minus 3 is 4, 6 minus 2 is 4, and that gives us our answer like that, okay? So whether you're doing it straight across like you did, which was great, um, or whether you're doing it where we say we got more negatives than positives, either way is good, okay? So negative 10 minus negative 4, so like we did at the first part of there, uh, here's what I like to tell my students, okay, is if we have minus a negative, let's just kind of take a big marker and make that a plus right there, okay, because now I've got negative 10 plus 4. So in other words, if you had negative 10 and then you had 4 bucks, or if you owed someone 10 bucks and you had 4 bucks, well, by the time you combine that stuff, you'll still owe someone 6 bucks. Now, again, we could have done that the same way that we did that last one, 
where we had negative 10 and then 4, right? So we can subtract this knowing that we have more negatives and just make sure that answer is negative, negative 6. It's the same thing. 8 minus 10. Negative 2. There we go. So I want to just show you guys this on a number line just because we're using kind of appropriate numbers on this one. Numbers that are smaller anyways. So if I started, if I started at uh, 0, let's go to 8 because that's, I apologize, that's where we should start. 1, 2, 3, that's 8. Well, starting at 8, remember the negative or minus direction is to the left. So this is telling us we could go to the left 10 units. So I could count this out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And that lands us at that negative 2 right there as well. So, However you prefer to think about that is what you should do. All right, 24, we got the parentheses, so we do need to do that first. And 1 minus 2, so if you had $1 and you gave away $2, you'd end up in the negatives by 1 there, okay? So now we got 9 minus that negative 1 minus the 4. Well, again, we got that minus negative stuff, which we can just change that to a big fat plus sign like this. So really, that ends up being 9 plus 1. So 9 plus 1, well, that's 10. And then if we minus 4 out of that, yeah, we should get 6. All right, so 21, we haven't looked at it like this yet because we got plus the negative right there. So the negative tells us that we're going to do the opposite of plus, which makes that a minus right there. So rewriting this problem, 2 minus 10 minus 6. So from left to right, subtraction, 2 minus 10. 2, if we took away 10, or went 10 to the left, we would land at negative 8. Of course, we still got the minus 6. So if we had negative 8 bucks and then we took away another $6, we would end up owing $14. On a cold winter day in Denver, the morning temperature was 15 degrees Fahrenheit. By noon, it had fallen 6 degrees. It didn't say it fell to 6 degrees. It just had fallen 6 degrees. And by 5 p.m. that afternoon, it had fallen another 10 degrees. What was the temperature at 5 o'clock p.m.? So we are starting at 15 degrees positive temperature. But then it falls, so we're going to subtract 6 degrees out of that. And then from there, it's going to fall another 10 degrees. That's pretty cold, by the way. Uh, so 15 minus 6, if we combine these, that lands us at uh, negative, I'm sorry, not negative, what the heck. If I had $15 and I took away 6, then I would have $9. So 9 minus 10, well, that's going to land us at the negative 1. So what was the temperature at 5 o'clock p.m.? Looks like it was negative 1 degree Fahrenheit. In Fargo, it was negative 18 degrees Fahrenheit, while in Tacoma, it was 43 degrees Fahrenheit. How much warmer was it in Tacoma, or was Tacoma? All right, so this is a difference, okay? So on, on the thermometer, again, we're looking at a horizontal, I'm sorry, vertical number line. Well, we got negative 18, which we'll see is right here. It's not proportional. And this goes all the way up to 43 degrees. Well, see, from negative 18, would have to go up to zero right there. So we had to go up 18. But then we had to go up another 43. So when we add these together, we get 3 plus 8, which is 11. Carry the 1. 1 plus 4 plus 1, 6. So how much warmer was it in Tacoma? 61 degrees warmer. Well, what if it asked how much colder was it in Fargo? We would say it would be 61 degrees colder or negative 61 degrees warmer. See, see how that doesn't really work there, though? <laughs> so uh, we'll just specify if it's warmer or colder.